Hello there and welcome to Business Connections Live. This is edition number 40. Steve Harlow with you here. It's great to have your company. And boy, once again, another, yes, you've guessed it, cracking show lined up for you. On the show tonight, my guest is Steve Mills. Now, Steve has been on the show twice before. He's back again. We're going to be discussing all things LinkedIn. There's been a lot of changes on LinkedIn over the past uh, couple of months. And uh, it really does, particularly if you're a business, I think LinkedIn has changed if you've got business pages and things like that. But the power of LinkedIn is truly second to none if you are in business for generating sales leads. Well, for generating a network of people that you can communicate with and maybe, who knows, even promote your product to. Steve Mills, it's great to have you back here in the studio. It's great to be back, Steve, and thank you very much for inviting me. You're looking absolutely radiantly well at the moment, <laughs> sickeningly well. You're out there playing tennis, I would imagine. Yeah, in, the, yeah, in my spare time, in the evenings and things, yeah, I love my tennis. So, you live a showbiz yeah. lifestyle, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Now, the last time you were on, we were talking about marketing uh, as a prudent marketeer, uh, but the very first show you did was the, the real biggie as far as uh, Business Connections Live is concerned. We were looking at LinkedIn, and it seems a lot of people are trying to leverage LinkedIn for their business at the moment to get the maximum return for their investment in time when they are using LinkedIn. Is LinkedIn still, do you think, the force it was when we looked at it, shall we say, six months ago? Well, I think more so, Steve, to be honest. I mean, it's currently growing at two new members every second right now, so that is phenomenal in itself. And usage compared with a year ago is up. 800%. So it's been used more than ever for many years when I've been doing my training and events. People often said to me, well, I'm on LinkedIn, but I don't really do very much, Steve. And uh, that's starting to change. I'm seeing people saying, I'm on LinkedIn, but you know, I'm trying to use it, but I don't quite fully understand it yet. So the, the, it's interesting how business owners are, are changing their attitude towards LinkedIn. It's not just being on there and doing nothing, but being on there and being quizzical to, uh, and looking at how they can learn more. Do you think it's the most effective social networking site to be on for business? Or is it a case? of it working with Twitter, working with your business Facebook page? Is it, is it a case of spreading it right across? I, I think so, yeah. I think all these sites are fantastic. And uh, I, I would say that LinkedIn's probably better from a business-to-business -business point of view. If I was more business-to-consumer based, maybe I'd be looking at something more like Facebook as the key. But all these sites have got their place. All of them work fantastically well if and only if you actually use the site as as intended, how, how you, you can use to market your business. So, Do, do you, you think know, a lot of people don't put enough effort into it and then they fail at the first hurdle? Yeah, absolutely. People go on to all these sites and they, they have a preconceived idea about them, like Facebook is not for business or LinkedIn is, you know, I've not got enough time for it and so on and so forth. And the truth of is, is if that's what they think, then they're absolutely right. Uh, but as we all know, you know, Facebook's a fantastic site for business and LinkedIn is is also uh, sometimes called actually the, the Facebook for business. Mm -hmm. uh, now yeah. we're just a few minutes in and I asked you, I was after one big win that we can get to straight away. The last time we talked LinkedIn with you, uh, the first big win was groups and I couldn't believe that. I actually said on the programme, I said if you watch no more of the programme, that yeah. one tip on its own is worth watching the programme yeah. for. And you said, well Steve, I can do that again. Yeah. Because I'm like that. Yeah. So what would be that, that one big uh, takeaway right now? Well, the, the one big thing that you can do right now that you couldn't do uh, literally uh, the beginning of May is you can add articles to your profile. Uh, if you'd like me, I can just show you how yeah, to yeah, do that. Right Would ahead, that be yeah. good? Yeah. So you can see my profile here, and these are the, uh, examples of the articles that I've uh, already produced. So if I go in here and click See More, you can see all the articles that I've produced. And what I'd like to do, if I may, is just click on the first one here. I did an article called The Six Biggest Marketing Mistakes That I Think Small Businesses Make. So if we click on that and open it up, you can see my article here. I can upload a, a, a picture of myself. I can create a link back to my website, which is always a really 
powerful thing to do. But as you can see at the top here, um, if you have a look at the stats, it actually tells you how effective you've been. Now, you can see here on the 19th of May was the first time I posted anything out through this new system. Um, we've had 3,608 views, uh, 142 likes. It's been retweeted 29 times. It's been liked on Facebook 32. Google Plus, it's been forwarded nine times there. Um, it's been commented on, so 25 people have commented. But just look at this stat here. This is really powerful. This shows that this particular article has been shared by 479 different people. Now, the question now, I've got to ask you about that before, yeah. before you move on. The question is, is that because you are, inverted commas, Steve Mills, and because you do promote mm. on a regular basis that you're getting that kind of coverage? Uh -huh. Or is it because you're using this in a proper way? I, do, I, do you see what I'm getting? Yeah, I at do. Right yeah, now? yeah, yeah. I, I think there's there's probably some truth in both of the, those things. And wh when I say say you know maybe it's because of me, I think it's only because not because I'm Steve Mills, because I'm someone who uses LinkedIn on a regular basis. People are used to seeing my information. I hope and believe uh, the information that I'm providing is is of real value to people. And so when I produce something new, more people are keen to to have a look at it. But I was just going to say, you know, 479 shares, if on average they've got 500 connections, that means that's been viewed by half a million people and that is just phenomenal numbers there. I must admit, every time you come on the programme you do talk these huge millions you know, of people you know, are actually seeing the content. Yeah. Do you think though, even though millions are seeing it, the response rate is still the, the, the one, two, three, four, five percent? Yeah, percent, if, if, if you're lucky Steve, to be honest. You know, it's just like in the old days, you know, I sent out a thousand letters, 950 of them were thrown in the, in the bin. I finished up with five leads, three meetings, two sales and so on and so forth. And that's exactly the way that happens. But that here. doesn't matter, does it? Because no. uh, you could do this. You've got one of two ways to go, haven't you? You can either do it and get some response or not do it and get no response. And if you're in business, any response is good, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. I mean, I've been teaching and preaching a philosophy of what I call marketing without money for years. And this is a great strategy. You can produce uh, an article like that. It's going to take you maybe half an hour, something like that, to produce it. And then you can market yourself. And, you know, I can go in here and retweet it myself and share it myself on LinkedIn and so on and so forth uh, very easily. And I I can be doing that literally for many, many years if I wanted to. Uh, but just trying to get that information out to my target market um, is, is great, but I can do that for free in less than a few minutes on LinkedIn. And that's what I think, certainly one of the things that makes LinkedIn so powerful. Has changed though recently, hasn't it? There, it there has are, indeed. I mean, yeah. For instance, uh, people who are putting up company pages, that's really changed a lot, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, massively. And we yeah. talked about that on the last programme. What are the uh -huh. big changes there? Well, the big one, um, which I actually thought was not, not such a great thing, was the removal of the product and service pages. Because when I had a, a company page, I could also upload product pages, so I could have 10, 15, 20, um, an infinite number of pages all marketing my products. They've changed that, they've, they've removed it completely, and what they've uh, come up with now is something they called showcase pages, which is sort of like a company page, but it's a page where I specifically market my products. So I can have, for me, for example, it might be a specific marketing seminar or a service that I provide, and, and I, can have, um, I can have a specific page on LinkedIn purely to market that product or service. Well, I mean, we're going to be talking a little bit more about maybe those particular pages. We're going to be looking at how LinkedIn could work for your business as well. And it really is, it's a valuable resource. If you're not using LinkedIn, we kind of, uh, we preach this mantra on a regular basis. If you're not losing, uh, using LinkedIn, then perhaps maybe you should be. Uh, if you think of it as a glorified Facebook for business, it, it is a little bit more than that. Uh, what we've found very interesting, groups are still the same, aren't they? Uh, indeed, yeah. So groups, very, very powerful feature. We will actually remind you a little bit about how you should utilize the groups, but we're going to be working away, our way through a number of different things or a number of different techniques and procedures and, and maybe ways that you can 
maximise, you can leverage the most return, that's a good old business expression, isn't it? you can leverage the maximum return from your usage of LinkedIn. So that's all to come over the next, well, 50 minutes or so. Uh, before we do move on, let's just remind you, though, a little bit about what we were talking about last week on the programme. We had the sales director of Unipart Automotive on the programme. Uh, that was Colin Bate. It was a fascinating programme. We were talking about, well, customer satisfaction, what you can do for that. Uh, the programme was called Customer Satisfaction Service and Intimacy. It was an interesting show, uh, some really good hints, some really good tips, all about sort of making certain that your customer is truly getting uh, a really good return from you. And the thing that was the most fascinating statistic that came out of it for me was unless you are, if you do these surveys, unless you're up there in 80% that say, yes, I thought the company was good, customers are likely not to come back to you. It was a frightening statistic. Unless you're right up there at the top, People do not take second best anymore. So then, last week on the program, it was Colin Bate. Uh, we were talking customer satisfaction, service and intimacy. And this is what happened on last week's edition of Business Connections Live. How do you build that brand loyalty, that customer satisfaction, that moment where you touch your customer to make certain that they keep coming back to you? And that's what we're talking about tonight. Colin Bate. Lovely to have you with us. Good Thank evening. you very much for joining us You're tonight. You're welcome. It's, you've got to be easy to deal with, so the customer's got to be hassle-free. And also you've got to add value to their business. And if you make their business more valuable, and that's when it starts changing from a purely transactional relationship into being a partnership, and I think that's the difference. If you do have a USP and a unique advantage, and you can bolt together that with uh, customer service and outstanding personal customer experience, then you're absolutely on a winner. Just imagine if you had all three of these uh, aspirations. So if you had something that was unique in the marketplace, you were the cheapest, and you give the best customer service, then there'd be nobody to rival you at all. Well, well broadly, um, all market research and this is historic market research, but it stands good today, that um, if you give a good experience to a customer, which people may find acceptable, broadly, just more than half of them are likely to use you again. So your retention rate is likely to be just a little bit better than 50%. But that's frightening, good isn't, good service. It, isn't it? Yeah, it's not till you give excellent and outstanding service how you're getting a retention level or a repurchase a level of uh, above 90%. I say to my guys, if someone rings and you pick the phone up and they want an exhaust system or a radiator or a clutch or a battery for the vehicle, if you put the phone down and you haven't hooked that sale, that inquiry is never coming back in the lifetime of a vehicle because it'll never need another one. And I think if you think about that, whether you're selling houses, white goods, TVs, you get a second anything, chance, you're unlikely to get a second chance for a significant period of time. So you've, when you get an inquiry, you've got to hook that inquiry and keep it. And you can only do that by making the customer feel special. Uh, is your strategy going to be to compete on price? Is it going to be compete on innovation and technology? Or is it purely about customer services? Ideally, it would be all three. Once you've developed the strategy, make sure it's implemented ruthlessly throughout your business and everybody in the business buys into it, every stakeholder. I think, uh, certainly in my experience within this industry and other industries as well, is that uh, businesses are extremely good at identifying an issue or an opportunity, so something to fix or something to exploit. They're pretty good at developing a plan and putting it to paper, and they're pretty good at reviewing whether it's worked or not. Where most businesses fall down is the implementation and the execution of that strategy. Um, well, I'm Colin Bay, as you know. I'm the Sales Director of Unipart and Motive, and uh, I had a bit of trepidation when Steve asked me to come and, uh, and, uh, and show my wares tonight, but it's been actually really enjoyable and uh, I've also been exposed today to uh, some of the, um, the, the, the previous sessions and uh, that's quite inspired me to go and find out and look for more as well. So I'll be a regular listener, I'll also portray the virtues of it as well and uh, I'm not too old to learn even though I'm getting on a bit, yeah? In terms of uh, tonight, I have spoke to you about customer service, customer intimacy and building relationships with customers and I guess I'd just like to leave you with five key points. First of all, treat your customer as if you'd want to be treated yourself so you know think about that you know if you don't like how, how you uh, how you've been treated then you're unlikely to uh, to um, retain uh, and stay with uh, various suppliers so treat the customer as you'd want to be treated yourself for sure secondly uh, a customer isn't a customer for a transaction a customer is a customer for life so if you think about that every time you talk to that customer a customer is a customer forever not just a transaction okay uh, thirdly I would say um, look at uh, one of the slides that we used previously you know, giving good service to a customer is only likely that they're going to come back to you slightly more than 50% of the time. You have to be given excellent service to get the 90% retention levels that you need in any successful business for sure. Um, next, I would say 
Um, you can earn trust, but it takes a lifetime to do that. And you've got to give outstanding personal customer service at every point of contact. You can lose that trust in a split second. So every single time you touch the customer, it's trust, it's service, it's outstanding personal customer levels of intimacy for sure. And, and lastly, you know, I would just say focus on the customer, because as we've said, if you don't, someone else will for sure. Sales Director of Unipart Automotive, that was Colin Bate there, he was on the programme last week, we were talking about customer satisfaction, that was a really interesting show, if you want more details of that, uh, just dig out Business Connections Live number 39, uh, this is number 40, edition number 40, <laughs> look at that, 40 and still here. They never said it would last. And they, there you go. They say you're, you're the best at 40. If you do want to subscribe to us, please do fill in all the forms that are on our homepage. And that's uh, www.businessconnectionslive.com. And we've got some exciting news coming up very shortly. There's the web address just sitting there. If you are watching us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. There's a small button just up here, the little red button, just it's around, it's around there. It all depends how big it is on the screen. But if you press on that, button you can subscribe and there's also one sitting underneath there's loads of buttons everywhere for you to press which is always good fun and if you want to email us and contact us you could have a program just like this one then all you've got to do is email us here at studio at businessconnectionslive.com or you can give us a telephone as well go to the website check out the website businessconnectionslive.com and everything's there but if you want to email us uh, that's the email address that you should be emailing us on uh, we're talking to Steve Mills this evening so uh, uh, an absolutely fascinating fascinating subject. LinkedIn is probably one of the, the hottest topics, in fact, on the web at the moment. People trying to find out the best way to utilize it. Yes, I know there are lots of videos that you're going to find on YouTube that tell you or well, they pretend to tell you how to use LinkedIn. This is the definitive article. This is the one you need to be watching from the beginning all the way through to the end because there are loads and loads of ideas and great techniques for you to use when it comes to using LinkedIn. Already, we have talked about articles, uh -huh. a great way of getting um, your, your words out there. And it doesn't take, as you said, it doesn't take very much research to put together the six key notes or the six key ways to do this, that and the other. Mm -hmm. And you can get it out there. And if it's of interest, I mean, if you write it for yourself and it's of interest to you, then the chances are it's going to be of interest to somebody else. And that's what's so good about LinkedIn. Now, we talked about the company page has been taken away. And you kind of touched on the fact that they're now calling them showcase pages. Indeed. So tell us a little bit more about those. Okay, so um, anybody who's got a company page can now set up a specific product-based showcase page. So for example, from my world, I run LinkedIn training, so I can set up a, a page for my LinkedIn training. It's very easy to do. Uh, it's just a matter of going onto your company page and then simply pressing the button on the right hand side called new showcase page and putting the information into there and uh, and that's it. It's Do you know why that. they took the company pages down? Do you know, I don't. I wish they hadn't. Uh, I'm sure there was method I mean, in so their mad madness. They were great. I had loads and loads of testimonials, people saying nice things about my training courses, and they took them away. So I was, I was yeah, not, not too happy, to be honest. But, you know, you have to deal with what you have to deal with. And, and you know, they, in their infinite wisdom, decided that this was going to make LinkedIn uh, more effective. So. Now, I suppose for most people, they will use it as a free service, but you do actually subscribe, don't you? So I do, what, yeah. What service do you take? Well, I'm, I'm a, a premium member, Ooh. Uh, which basically means I can do more of what everybody else can do, plus I can do a few things extra that people who uh, use the free version can't actually do. Do you think it's worth doing to actually become, I mean, particularly if you're using it for generating new sales leads? Is it the right thing to be doing? That's a really good question, and the answer to that is it depends. If you're new to LinkedIn and you've got 20 connections and you're not really using it very much right now, there are a whole range of things that you can do to move your business up, up that sort of ladder on LinkedIn before you need to go and pay LinkedIn some money. If you're pretty uh, okay on LinkedIn and you've got maybe 500 connections and you're using it on a, a regular basis anyway, then I'd say take it to the next level and go and sign up and pay. And there are there are three different levels of payment and, and basically the more you pay, the more you get. 
Mm -hmm. What about um, some of the other new features that they're talking about now? Um, we've always had a form of pay-per-click on LinkedIn where we want to generate people. Are, are we looking to generate people to drive them to our LinkedIn page or are we looking to drive people to our web page? What are we trying to actually do when we when we use any of these type, kind of pay-per-click yeah. kind of ideas? Yeah. Well, the, the truth is it could be either, but, but for me, I would much rather send them to my web page uh, my website, sorry, not my LinkedIn page, more, much more than, than, than LinkedIn. On my, on my website, I've got a whole variety of, of pages and courses and information, and I've got my own personal branding on my site and so on and so forth. So I would rather drive traffic to that page than my LinkedIn profile. Now. They've got a form of pay-per-click at the moment where they can do advertising. You were just telling me a moment or so ago that you can now use video in that. Indeed, Just tell yeah. us a little bit more about that. And if you can show us as well, yeah, sure. that would be fantastic. Well, if I, if I do a, a demo, uh, yes. and then everybody can watch how okay, to do that. Fine. Yeah. So to find this, you go into business services here, and then simply into advertising. So I'm going to click on that button there. Uh, that opens up uh, the targeted advertising in LinkedIn. I then press Get Started. Uh, click through to uh, that section here. And here we go. So we've got two sections here. The first one on the left is where I can create an advert or on the right, I can sponsor a link. What that means is when I post something on my homepage on LinkedIn, I can sort of promote it. Now, the one that I recommend and the one that's always seemed to work really well for me and for my clients is the advertising. So I'm going to click on that and just demonstrate that. So I'm going to set up an advert here and we'll just call it for now a test campaign. You could have called it Business Connections Live. We could have done, yes. But yeah, we'll we, call it a we'll, test campaign But that's easier to write. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we can do one of, one of two things here. If you look down here on the right-hand side, you can see what this is going to look like in the form of a, a written advert. But here, if I move over here, I can add a video. Ooh. Now, you know, I, I'm actually a massive believer that video is the way forward as far as marketing is concerned. On a video, I can be enthusiastic. I can, you know, I've got my body language and enthusiasm in my voice, all those powerful, you know, sales and marketing tools. Whereas in words, how can I be so passionate about what it is I'm, you know, trying to get over and talk about? Now, okay, that might have been a little bit OTT, but I'm sure you, you, you get and understand what I'm talking about here. So video is incredibly powerful. So if somebody comes to my advert and this Steve, got, you know, sort of saying, hi, welcome to, you know, this, this short video. Today, I'd like to talk to you about this fantastic new seminar that I've got running in three weeks time. That for it me- shows the passion, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, it shows so, people buy from people. Yeah, absolutely. People buy from people they know, like, and trust. And if you see me on a video, you think, well, that man's either a, I don't you know, know a, him. Serial, don't like him. a serial axe murderer, <laughs> or hopefully, you know, a decent person who comes across as, you know, ethical and, and so on and so forth and decide that, you know, it just builds that little bit more trust, shall we I, say. I, I must say, and I must say for our viewers as well, for that matter, that uh, I actually went on one of Steve's uh, courses. Yes, indeed, yeah. And if you ever get... Just because I just wanted to go along, and he, he very kindly invited us along to, uh, to his, uh, his course. If you ever do need to go on one of these, I do suggest you do check out Steve's uh, website. Uh, there are the courses, there's a whole range of courses, everything are, from yeah. LinkedIn all the way through to website, SEO, there's yeah. everything's there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. It's a fascinating uh, day for you as well. So if you do want more details of that, we'll give you the web address before the end of the program. But do go along. You'll also find it in the notes below this particular show. If you're watching on iTunes, just open up uh, the notes that come with the particular program you'll find all the details that you need to know to get in touch with Steve anyway I, I've cut you off in your prime we're going oh, back okay. to the ad video okay there is a gold rush for video at the moment okay. it is yeah. way forward and um, we agree with you there so Absolutely. right we, we can do okay. video so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to upload a web page so I'm just going to pop over um, on to my video here, just as an example. So I'm going to That's take- an old video. It is an old video, yeah. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> and I'm gonna take and copy that there onto my profile here. Where am I? Sorry, I lost myself there. Ah, there I am. So I'm gonna paste that in there. 
So that video now becomes a video on uh, LinkedIn. I'm then going to add a photo. Uh, so, sorry, I've taken that there. I should have added that there, beg your pardon into there like that. Got that a little bit mixed up there. Okay, so I take that, I press go, and that's going to upload. Oh, I've made a bit of a boo-boo. Sorry, Steve. That particular video needs to be less than 120 seconds. Well, that's and it's interesting. slightly so longer. That's, that's, so two, that's, two that's two minutes, minutes isn't it? Yeah, two-minute profile video there. And it's interesting what, what uh, YouTube is saying as well for the for the promotion videos that you use when people come onto your website, uh -huh. uh, they're, they're looking there that you can go over two minutes, but I recommend a two minute video is gonna be the ideal length of time sure. to actually promote your, your website. The thing that we've found that's interesting uh, about uh, YouTube is that they, they are looking for a number of, of uh, subscribers to be subscribed to your YouTube channel before they start actually truly promoting the video. They don't actually say that, but the, it seems like the rule of thumb across the web is that that's what people believe is actually happening. You have to have over a thousand subscribers before they start using your own personal promotional video sure. for your YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but once again, you know, you're working all the time on building, you should be using LinkedIn to be building the number of subscribers uh, that are watching your YouTube channel as well. So anyway, have you sorted yeah, yourself I, out? Yeah, I've, I've sort of sorted it out. I've not got them found another video. So rather than do a video advert, I'm just going to do a plain Fine. text one if that's uh, yep. okay. But basically the same thing Thing applies here so if I wanted to rather than add an image I've now got here I could just click and add a video but I now know it needs to be less than two minutes, two minutes right. and mine was a little bit longer so uh, I then got to add a, a, a headline here now there's an old saying in advertising that the headline is the advert for the advert and so incredibly important so we'll just for now they often say that a great headline. The thing you should okay. be thinking about the most is you should spend the maximum amount of time thinking about your headline yeah, because, absolutely. as you said, that is the advert for the advert. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. And you've got to cap. I suppose you only have seconds to capture the person's mind's eye, haven't you? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, on LinkedIn in particular, you know, it, it, it's so important because people are browsing when they're just looking around. They're they're not necessarily on LinkedIn looking for you, uh, but you're presenting adverts to your target market and therefore that headline is absolutely essential and uh, really important. One of the things that is pretty pretty good on LinkedIn is this this little box here. It's called the ad variation or as us marketers call it a split test mm -hmm. whereby instead of having just one headline I can have two, three, four different adverts. LinkedIn rotate them round and after a period of say a couple of weeks I notice that advert A is out pulling advert B by three to one. So that's the one you I go can with. get. Yeah, and go with that one because I know what works and what doesn't. So, and again, that's a great example of, you know, something that's really powerful. I think. I think a lot of people are always worried when it comes to using any form of pay-per-click advertising that the costing and the pricing can uh -huh. run away with you and you can end up getting a huge bill at the end of the month that you just weren't expecting. Sure. How do you protect yourself against that? Uh, t two ways. One, you agree how much are you willing to pay per click every time somebody clicks on your advert and very, very importantly that you set yourself a daily budget. The last thing you want to do is set your advert up at £1.50 a click and get 35,000 clicks on the first day. That might not be too good no. for many small business owners that are watching thing. today. So you need to make sure that you, you know, you set, it, it can go as low as £8 a, a day. So for a few hundred pounds, you can you can try this out. And is it very much the same way as it works when you're doing Google AdWords? No, it's very, very different. Let me just show you. Uh, so I've set my advert up, I've uploaded an image, I've gone into the, added a headline and some great text here. So my ad looks something like this here on the right hand side. I then go in here and this is the big difference between this and uh, Google. On Google, it's a matter of somebody's typed something into Google, they're looking for uh, something and your advert pops up because you've got keywords mm -hmm. in here. On LinkedIn and indeed on Facebook, this works the opposite way around. You're looking for them. So this is profile driven rather than, uh, tag, than, driven. than tag driven. So for example, I can go in here and I can type in, for example, 
I want my advert only to be seen in the UK and let's say for example I'm in Birmingham and for me I may be running a seminar or my business is based in Birmingham. So now I am only advertising to people in Birmingham and we can see here straight away that I know how many people are on LinkedIn who are in Birmingham which is 316,000. Now, this is where it gets clever. You can target people based on company name. So what that means is only people who work for that particular company get to see your advert. So you can target people, say for example, you wanted to win business from Vodafone, you could target people based on that. Only people who work for Vodafone get to see your ad. Now, if uh, that, now a lot of these companies like, shall we say, Vodafone, British Gas, people like uh -huh. that, they have private groups, don't they? They do indeed. So that means people are members of private groups. Uh -huh. uh, are you then restricted from getting the information to them? Will, will they nope. still see your no. ads? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So this is nothing to do with groups. This is just purely me selecting, I want these people to see my ads. Now, if it wasn't a company, but a category, I can select, I want to advertise to people in the construction industry who are civil engineers who are in Birmingham. Now look there how that number has reduced. So, but, this, but, but the difference here is that you are going straight to a, a vertical niche market. Vert exactly. You can pinpoint. You could literally advertise on LinkedIn to managing directors of a company called Steve Mills Marketing, of which there is only one in the world, and if I don't click on it, then it's free. You know, how powerful is that? I, I, I'm sitting here somewhat speechless because yeah, it, this is it, it a bit It does like amaze me. It when really you talked does. about the groups before. <laughs> Thank you. And I came away from the groups thinking, God, that is such a powerful feature within yeah. LinkedIn. And here we are now talking about this, this, where I can target. I can target with a video. Yeah. I can target with a text ad. Yeah. And I can target directly can, to the yeah, company that I want I to target. I can segment either, I can either target the company, I can target the category, so if I work in consumer goods and I want to take target people in the wholesale industry, I can do that. Not only that, but I can then target people by job title. So if I sell HR services or marketing or recruitment or whatever it is, I can target people by that. Or, again, I can target people by category, by job function. So if I want to target people in accounting or in art and design, I can do that. Or I can target people based on their seniority. You know, I, I, it absolutely blows me away that so many businesses, and I guarantee many of your listeners will be saying, wow, I didn't know you could do this on LinkedIn because I've done this with so many people and most of them have no clue about this form of advertising. Now, I think it is a huge opportunity for people. Now, I, I know do. what you're doing right now. You're pausing this program had you fooled there for a moment in there but you're pausing the program and you're just going back over that again now aren't you because you cannot believe what you've just seen so that's the power of business connections live by simply following the instructions that steve's given you all of a sudden you've now got a really useful tip that you can use on linkedin and you can use it on a daily basis and you can target vertical niche markets i mean how powerful is it's, that if you were just trying to get in front of a particular business or company this is mu this must be one of the most powerful ways of using it do you I have think so. to be a premier or no. premium member no no, anybody can do this. Anybody can set this up. You don't have to have a company page. All you need is a basic page on LinkedIn and a credit card because you and have to pay card. per click. Now, typically, something like that, if you were, should we say, you use Vodafone quite a lot, are they one of your customers? No, no. I, oh, yeah, I live in Newbury, so oh, there you go. Uh, yeah, a lot no, of people no, call no, it Vodabury. <laughs> is that where yeah, people yes. work there? <laughs> so, um, with with a company like Vodafone, yeah, I mean, what what kind of cost do you think if you are doing if you're targeting directly to a company, is a brand like Vodafone going to sort of rate the price up a little bit? Um, no, I, I, no, no, not at all. No, no, no. It 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 wouldn't. I mean. Uh, Every time I've used a LinkedIn pay per click, the costs per click have been somewhere between about £1.50 and about £2.50 at the most. So, you know, that's roughly where that, where that campaign will be. Okay.
So that's the advertising that we've got there. It's as simple and as straightforward as that. Uh, what a great way of actually going about making absolutely certain that you are ta targeting the right, the right person. I'll tell you what always fits in when you are targeting the right people. It's all about lead generation. It's all about generating new sales. It's all about getting, well, I suppose, getting customers through your door and then providing them with what they're after. And maybe some companies find that a little bit difficult or they don't have a methodology in their minds that they can actually use to maximize the return when it comes to actually getting out there and getting new customers. Uh, we had Jim McLaughlin on the program a little while back. He's, uh, he's the managing director of a company called Axiel. And uh, he was talking about lead generation and what you can do in your business to make absolutely certain that you do maximize your return when it comes to lead generation. Have a look at this. You're watching Business Connections Live, Jim McLaughlin, the Managing Director of Axial, as in Coaxial, uh, talking about generating leads and finding brand new business. Uh, he's with us this evening. There are a there are hundred different things that people have to think about. And I think it's also that people tend to do what they're most comfortable with. Um, sales and marketing is really all about communications. And not everyone is a natural communicator. I think that, that before you think about getting onto the telephone or sending out an email or, 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 or sending out any form of communication, it's, it's absolutely vital to sit down and, and understand firstly, who are the people that I need to speak to? Where are those people? What kind of people are they? So the first thing that any organisation should be doing is looking at understanding and segmenting its marketplace. What's very important for every organisation to understand is the various ways that they can interact and engage with potential clients and attract those people to them. Well, I think LinkedIn is an absolutely key um, area. So what we find increasingly is where we used to go out and purchase lists regularly for people, mm. now much more frequently Frequently, we'll use our researchers, we'll sit down with a client and we'll go through that process of identifying a profile of, of people and we'll then go out and we'll, we'll search the web and particularly um, looking at social networking sites like LinkedIn and in a business-to-business in a -business environment, LinkedIn is the premium site. It's that, that's where most of the people yeah. that, that, that our customers will want to speak to are going to be found. So rather than actually buying a list, um, we, would, we, we, we would research the names of people that are likely to be interested in the, the product. So the next step is having defined all of those things, you need to be sure that your, your proposition and your messaging around that proposition are articulated in a way that's appropriate to that target market. Because you, you're likely to, most companies are likely to have more than one target market. And there's no point in just having a single message, that, a single message that you, that you want to fit all. If, you're, if you've got a campaign, for example, that's around a new service or a new product, you want to make sure that the messaging, the messaging that you're taking out there is appropriate to the person you're speaking to. So for example, if you're selling a, a technology proposition into another company, the people that are likely to be involved in that purchase will be IT people and finance people. Well, the message that you want to give to the IT people will be entirely different to the message you want, you want to give to the finance people. And what I would say is that one of the, the, the benefits that a company like ours can bring to, to, to companies is that our business is about articulating messages. It's about understanding the benefits that, that, that can be delivered and I think that it can frequently be of value to a company to have um, an external person who's, who doesn't have uh, an investment in a particular product or service from a particular angle. Our role is to stand in the shoes of the potential customer and try and articulate the, the message and the proposition in language that will be, will be meaningful to that, to that potential customer and will resonate with them. And that's frequently easier to do for someone who, who is not intimately involved with a product. I think that it's very important for every business that wants to get the most out of its investment in business development and lead generation to make lead generation part of an annual marketing plan. Whether you do that in-house or whether you engage a company like Axial, make sure that there is a plan in place and you're going to follow that plan rather than just doing something ad hoc and just to hit a target at the end of the quarter. That's not the best way to get the, to, to get the most out of your investment.
The second point I would make is to remember that lead generation is about establishing a conversation. It's all about business conversations and to do that effectively it's important to understand who you're talking to and speak to those people in language that resonates with them. Make sure that your messaging is about the benefits to them. It's not about your product and service, it's about the benefits that it can deliver to their business. And thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, and this comes back to a, a, a point that Steve raised about speaking to thousands of people. It's not about speaking to thousands of people. As in most things in business, it's all about focus. So understanding what you want to do and focusing down so that the smallest number of conversations that you can have lead to the maximum output. If you'd like to discuss any of this with me, I'd be more than happy. You can reach us in a number of ways through our website, which is at axial, that's A-X-I-A-L-L dot U-K dot com. And if you go to the contact tab, you can, uh, you can send me an email from there. You can send me an email at jim at axial dot U-K dot com. And you can reach me on the phone at 077-99-076-980. Fantastic Jim McLaughlin there of Axial on generating leads and finding new business. A cracking program. If you get an opportunity to watch the entire show, uh, please do. I think you'll find it really useful. Uh, Jim's a great guy as well. Give him a call, actually, if you are looking at maybe some techniques or maybe some help when it comes to sorting out uh, your leads and find that new business. We're talking about finding new business today, in fact. We're talking about that with Steve Mills, who's my guest today. Before we go back to Steve, when it comes to finding new business, of course, what you're looking for is maybe some form of a networking event. And have I mentioned that there's a, a big networking event coming up very shortly? It's going to be taking place in Wolverhampton Racecourse on Friday, the 19th of September. It is the Business Networking Show. Don't miss it. Book now. It's the UK's largest networking event. As I said, 19th of September, Wolverhampton Racecourse. Some of the guest speakers are going to be there. Rachel's going to be there. We've got the BBC's The Apprentice runner-up, Neil Clough's going to be there. Business Networking for Dummies author, uh, Stefan Thomas is going to be there as well. Dee Blick's going to be there. Hey, is that Brad Burton there in the middle? I can't believe it. Uh, he's going to be there too. They're just some of the key speakers. Also, you'll see some of the partners from all the major UK networks uh, are going to be there as well. And look, Business Connections Live, we're the media partners for this event. We're going to be broadcasting live from the event for the entire day. And we're going to be talking to many of the speakers that are going to be at the show. It's going to be a fantastic uh, event, a fantastic opportunity uh, to go along and to do some serious networking. Oh, and by the way, Dee is going to be on the programme in a couple of weeks' time. We're looking forward to having us here. And also... If you go onto our website and you register uh, with us on there, you put your name into our website, this isn't the subscribe to the YouTube channel. This is registering on our website at uh, www.businessconnectionslive.com. You've got a chance of getting one of these. So you can actually head your way up to Wolverhampton and get your admission absolutely free because we've got some tickets to give away. As you can see, the value there, £20. Admit one. We'd like to thank the guys at Four Networking for supplying them with us. As I said, Stefan's going to be there. Uh, that's his book, Business uh, Networking for Dummies. And of course, the man, Brad Burton, life, business just got easier now limited tickets on this and we're going to be drawing uh, names out of the hat when are we going to be doing that a couple of weeks time over the next couple of weeks we're going to be doing that so if you want to get one of these 20 pound tickets to admit one to go to what is probably the premier networking event of the year uh, this is your opportunity all right then let's get back to the business of linkedin my guest as i said is steve mills we've talked articles we've talked showcases we've talked advertising love that mm -hmm. i Good. think that is just the bee's knees um there's just something i want to ask you about i do notice that they've got this is all the time at the new search facilities, is it? What we're doing here with with the advertising or are the new search facilities for LinkedIn slightly different? There's a new search opportunity yeah, on uh, called Advanced Search. 
So again, I can show you very simply on my website here and over at the, uh, the top here, there, the, there we go, there's a little button there called Advance and what this does is open a page up here, uh, which is, as you can see, right. is an advanced search. So here, rather than just going into the top and type in, you know, I'm looking for accountants in London, I can be much more sort of segregated. So I can here search uh, on a particular industry, for example, or I can search a company, and so on and so forth. So it's I'm very search. clever. So, yeah, and that's literally yeah. from your homepage there, from the yeah, search bar Yeah, it's at the just top. at the top here, that little grey button at the top there. Just click on that, and that opens up. A, uh, a more advanced, in-depth search tool. You know, a lot of people, when they come up to me and we talk about LinkedIn, they, they, the inevitable questions come up, and we've, we've said that LinkedIn is kind of a social networking site. Do you think it's possible to make money from LinkedIn? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we personally make about 40% of our business on LinkedIn. Uh, I've got a client who've made £135,000 worth of uh, fees, they're a, a solicitor actually, in the last month purely from LinkedIn. I've just got back from Dubai. How did I get that business? Well, I got it on LinkedIn. I've, in the last year, I've been over to Saudi Arabia. Um, I got that work on LinkedIn too. And uh, we've got some ongoing clients in Dubai right now that we're working with and all that business was won on LinkedIn. Do you think it's possible to generate real leads? Because there's always this thing about people coming to your LinkedIn page, but there's always that kind of feeling that you don't really know who was coming to your LinkedIn page. Now, uh -huh. other ways of actually seeing who is coming to yeah, the page and yeah, looking at you. Yeah, there are, yeah. One of, the, one of the great features on LinkedIn, and it's probably one of the, my best tools that I've got to win business, is the, uh, the search feature. LinkedIn tell me, literally, who has been to my LinkedIn page. Now, they've been there for several reasons. Maybe they're competitors checking me out sometimes. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're people who've got there mistakenly. They were looking for a, a different Steve Mills, shall we say. But the vast majority of people have gone there because they're interested in me at some level. And uh, they've gone there, they've checked out my page, and uh, LinkedIn, again, give me a list of them. So I can go down here on my, on my profile page, I can see here who's viewed my profile. I can click on that link and LinkedIn will provide me with a list of everybody who's been to my profile there. Now, what and do you do go. with them then? Okay, so there's two things I do. With, with Mandy here, for example, uh, who's somebody we can see with a little head there, is not currently a connection of mine. I may go and ask Mandy to be a, uh, uh, a contact. So I'm going to sign her up and bring her into the sort of fold of my, my contacts. With Sarah, who's already a contact of mine. You can see there she's a first. That means she's a first level contact of mine. I may just drop her a quick email saying, hi Sarah, Steve Mills here. Thought I'd just drop you a, a quick message. I saw you went on, you've been on my profile today. Can I help you with anything? And is it all about making absolutely certain that you do properly at enter into a conversation with your contact. You know, I cannot think of anything more important than what you've just said. You have to communicate on LinkedIn. If I just leave it to Sarah to, you know, have a look and I do I, no forward action, I know I'm not proactive at all, maybe one in, you know, 10 maybe, you know, they'll turn into business. But by being proactive, I can double that, I can triple it, I can quadruple it by picking up the phone to Sarah or dropping her an email and uh, being able to to communicate with us. So the key is communicate. And it's a little bit like, you know, if I go to your event, uh, but I sit there in the corner and refuse to speak to anybody at the, the biggest networking event uh, around, but I won't actually speak to anybody, it's almost like, what's the point here? What's the point of going? Why be on LinkedIn if you're not going to do anything? Why go to a Chamber of Commerce event if I'm not going to speak to anybody? Is there We've an got to communicate. Is there an etiquette, do you think, to the way you actually, you, <clears throat> you actually communicate with people? For instance, you, you see a lot on the bottom of people's profiles where they say um, things like, open for new business ideas and approaches. Yeah. And so you you drop them a new business idea to and approach them and they come back and go spam. Yeah. <laughs> and you think, Unfortunately, well, why, yeah. why did you say yeah, that then? You know? I, yeah, yeah. So is that just People you have... just 
T- take the yeah. you take it on the, yeah. on the chin. Okay. Another one, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Just take it on the chin. Yeah. Now you mentioned your articles earlier on. And I kind of said to you uh, about the articles. Said, is it because you're Steve Mills or is it because mm-hmm. the articles? Because you're going to have a following. How yeah. many people follow you, or are you? Going um, to? I've got about two and a half thousand on LinkedIn, about thirty-three thousand on Twitter and about 5,000 on Facebook. So, so you can actually reasonable... promote an article that you write yeah, to. You can actually sure. point people there. Yeah. If you don't have that kind of following, how can you actually get people to find your articles? Well, number one, you've got to work towards that. But number two, if you want to do that quickly, I'd say that would be through groups. You can promote an article through any group and be able to send that out to all the members of that group. OK, next question coming up. For one thousand pounds, uh, getting your profile found on LinkedIn. I mean, that's okay. There's a lot of people that have got a profile and no one ever visits them. They are the Billy No Mates of LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very powerful question that, and uh, and really important. Again, I'd like to do a quick demonstration. If you go onto LinkedIn right now, and I'm going to type in internet marketing advice. You can see that I'm number one on there under internet marketing advice. So when someone does a search on LinkedIn, that's that's where everybody wants to be under yeah. your particular search. So that is incredibly powerful when somebody searches because they're looking for some internet marketing advice. Who they're going to go to? I would hope that certainly a reasonable amount may go to the guy who's number one on LinkedIn mm-hmm. anyway. So the big question is, how do you do that? How yeah, can you how achieve you that? Yeah. Um, there are many ways, but what it's really about is making sure that the, the headlines, the titles on your LinkedIn profile are keyword rich. So one title is this one here. Um, another title would be, as I scroll down here, the titles of my current and or past job. So I've got here, for example, marketing advisor. I've got here m- internet marketing advisor. See that there? Mm-hmm. That's the absolute search uh, that, that I've just done. Yeah, I searched under internet marketing advice. Uh, this particular post uh, of this particular job title as internet marketing advice. However, What's great and new on LinkedIn is LinkedIn will help you with this. If you go into edit your profile here and then you scroll down to your summary, this area here, oops, sorry, let's just go back to this area here and then click on the edit button. Hey presto, on the right hand side, LinkedIn now tell you these are the words that you need to add in order to optimize your profile and to get found on LinkedIn. Is this a new feature? Yeah, very new feature, yeah. This wasn't around a couple of weeks ago. So this is really cool. And you can see here that I've already got 14 of of the words that LinkedIn think I should have already on my profile. So it's saying, nice work, you're already using 14 powerful keywords, and I can click there to see which ones I've used. And I can look in here, and they might not all be appropriate for me. For example, we deliver might not be a keyword for me particularly, but some of them might be, re- you know, online marketing agency might be a keyword that I decide actually I'd love to be found under that as well but on it, my profile. But they are to be included in your text and not just to be dumped in. Uh, yeah, they? absolutely. Yeah, this is not about cutting and pasting a, a list of these words in there. It's about featuring them in the words that uh, are within here. Yes. That, I mean, once again, absolutely fascinating. Didn't, didn't even realise that was, no, there, as you said, yeah. uh, brand new. I suppose that kind of leads us on because you're kind of talking there of keywords and stuff like that. That kind of, Can you use LinkedIn to do SEO your own site? I mean, can you do that with you it? You absolutely can, yeah. Um, anybody that knows anything about Google and how to get rated higher, more and more important is your social media profile. So how you're rated in terms of social media affects how your website is rated on Google. Now, there are two things here to consider. One is how you relate with Google. Google loves people who are involved with which company. 
with Google. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you if you if you're on Google, you got a Google profile. You're using Google Plus. You're using Google Local. You're using YouTube and Blogger.com. All those things are all part of the the Google family. Blogger.com. Um, Blogger.com. Yeah, it's a fantastic website for producing blogs and uploading videos and so on and so forth. Owned by Google. Massive website. Great. As far as LinkedIn's concerned. Creating links from what Google calls high credibility, ethical, and relevant websites is one of the most powerful things you can do. And obviously, on on um, uh, LinkedIn, I've got an opportunity so here on my profile yep, again to have a look, and I've got three links back here, back to three different websites of mine. Uh, that all are creating link backs, high credibility link backs from this massive website that Google rates much higher than my website because it's probably a billion page website. Google rates it really highly. I create links back. That helps me to uh, get rated higher on Google. In the, in the scale of things then, how, just how important do you do you put LinkedIn when it comes to generating those leads and sales? Is it is it the single most important tool, or is it a combination of, or is it? I mean, can it replace your your direct marketing nearly? I mean, where does it stand? In well, the, it's because what I suppose what I'm asking is the investment. What in, what kind of investment do you put into using LinkedIn to generate business? Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll answer those in two se separate sections. Y yes, it, that could, it could be that I just marketed myself on LinkedIn. I could do that. But my belief is if I do that, then I'm going to lose out on other business. Why would I do that? I cannot see a business reason for that. If I'm not using Facebook, then potential business there. If I'm not going networking, there's potential business there. If I've not got videos on my website, I'm losing potential business there. So all these are uh, part of what I call my multiple streams of income uh, philosophy uh, of, of marketing. I think that's really, really important. Um, as far as uh, you know, getting getting more business on LinkedIn, uh, you know that that's absolutely you know a, a great opportunity, and uh, you know um, I, I cannot see it. It's almost like wh why wouldn't you use it? Why wouldn't you use LinkedIn? I, I cannot see a reason for not doing. As far as how much effort does it take? Well. Most of the things you can do for nothing, I've showed you one way of, you can pay per click. You can also become a premium member. That costs, you know, I think it's about 16, they do offer it 16 17 month, pounds. They? Yeah, yeah. In, yeah. yeah it's, it, you know, it's only 17, 18 pounds, something like that. It's not a great deal of money at the, at the basic level. Uh, but most of it you can do for free. What it does cost is the time it takes to, to use it. And I, I'd suggest to kick off with, you'd be looking at maybe quarter of an hour, half an hour a day, and that should be spread out during the day. It's not in one bit, just go on, do a little bit. And after lunch, go and check a few things, go and have a look at your profile. So you're looking at that. In the afternoon, you might want to go and post something out through your groups, get some messages out there as well. So uh, that, that would be um, my minimal investment. But of course, it depends what you want. You know, is this about winning fifty thousand pounds worth of business, or fifty million pounds worth of business? You make you know, it depends sound so on the attractive. Size. Yeah, I mean, depends on the size the of your business. Fifty million pounds could be just around the corner. Well, you know, for some businesses, maybe. Hopefully, yours and mine, Steve. <laughs> you know, as always, time has beaten us, and I, I hope you found it useful. We're gonna. There's no two ways about it. We're going to get Steve back on the program. We're getting back right. sooner than later, if that's all right with you. Absolutely. Because anytime. I always feel that when we finish the program, that there is still maybe another hour that we could sit here and chat. And maybe what we'll do is uh, we'll do some very specials where we look at one particular aspect and we'll just work our way through that one aspect, make them a little bit shorter and just have them as a special here on Business Connections Live. Uh, our guest on next week's program is Tim Bodell. He's uh, from Phoenix IT. He's going to be talking about how better 
adoption of the cloud enables SMEs to free up real estate and skills to focus on their core business. It will be fascinating. A lot of people don't really understand the power of the cloud in business yet. Okay, we're beginning to hear that people are using utilities and uh, programs that are sitting in the cloud, but here's an opportunity to find out more about it. He'll also be talking a little bit about business recovery as well. Uh, what I must say is at the beginning of the week, um, we popped along to the South East Kent, Surrey, Sussex and Channel Isles Company of the Year Awards for Young Enterprise. Uh, Young Enterprise, that was a fantastic event that we went to. You just see there was the brochure. I was uh, the compare at the event. And if we can just have a quick gander at the brochure, there it is. You can see it was a really good day. Here are just uh, the companies that were there. Uh, Bird Igloo, they did very well. And complete a whole load there of different companies. Absolutely fantastic. Our thanks to all the sponsors, of which we were one. Business Connections Live, we were there too. But nice to be in the realms of the likes of Asda and HSBC and the other big people that were there too. So an absolutely fantastic Absolutely fantastic event, and thank you very much, and well done uh, to all the people that are there, to the different businesses, and also well done to the winners too. So, a fantastic event. And that practically wraps up this particular program, except for the very last bit, and that's Steve's bit down the camera. And this is where we remind you the key things that you should be considering if you're using LinkedIn. Steve, do you mind doing that? No, no. You're absolutely. always prepared for it. Yeah. You're a man of many parts, most of which covered by your clothing. So <laughs> if you're ready then. I'm ready. Straight down camera number three, Steve, the airwaves are all yours. Okay, so the number one thing I would suggest that you do on LinkedIn is to be consistent. You need to use it on an ongoing basis. Number two, I would say, go and get some training. Make sure that you understand fully what you need to do on LinkedIn and all the different opportunities that there are. Most of the people I meet use two or three different ways. On my training programs, I teach over 40 different strategies for growing your business on LinkedIn. Uh, the last comment I'd make would be to utilize groups. Groups are an awesome opportunity. If you want a way of getting a message out free of charge to thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even millions of people, you can do that for free on LinkedIn groups. Thanks for listening. That was Steve Mills, cracking bloke, cracking ideas and cracking ways for you to actually use LinkedIn. Listen, that practically wraps up this edition of Business Connections Live. It's been absolutely fabulous having your company with us today. Uh, don't forget, if you found uh, this program inspiring, interesting, and really useful, imagine if it was about your brand or your product. Imagine having something just like this program for your business. Are you sending out newsletters at the moment? Well, now's an opportunity for you to send out a complete TV program about your business. We can do that for you here at Business Connections Live. All you've got to do is contact us at uh, businessconnectionslive.com, our website. You can email us if you wish at studio at businessconnectionslive.com. And there's the email address sitting on the screen right now. Or if you want, you can give us a call on the dog and boat. 01784 256 777 and ask for Linda and uh, we can sort that out for you. Already we're getting a number of companies that are coming to us now to produce their video business uh, newsletters. Yours could be the next business that joins us here in the studios of Business Connections Live. From all the team here, don't forget you can contact us by any social media, but from me, Steve Highland. Steve Mills, thank you very much indeed, thank you Steve. Again, Great to Steve. have you with us. My pleasure. Till we do it all again. Don't forget, we're back live next Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Bye for now. Bye-bye.